And we're back. Ah, About excellent. two minutes left on the timer here for match five of the Sunday Community Skirmish number 107. This is, uh, we're down to the loser's bracket here watching the Fancy Maynard Riders face off with the East Chaladon Trading Company. Just kind of poking around and looking at loadouts. Uh, we're on Battle of the Dunes, so lots of long-range fun, if you think that's fun. Uh, I know a lot of folks in the community kind of poo-poo the long-range maps, just because there's a lot of time spent with nothing happening. But I'm also seeing a couple of uh, interesting little bits and pieces. Uh, I love to rip off Dementio's loadouts, and I'm looking at the, uh, the Hades Merc setup, and... Uh, I'm wondering if that's still even going to arc. I know the uh, Muse messed around with the Mobula arcs, and I'm not sure if that's still going to work. Uh, if it is, it's going to barely line up. It used to work fine, though, and it was uh, one of the most fantastically awful things to have to deal with. Depending upon... That's an interesting loadout, indeed. Yeah. If, if that's going to line up, it's going to be quite powerful. But if those arcs are going to fail them... Uh... One second. Yeah, I'm sure, uh, you know, Dementio's probably spent some time working out exactly where the new arcs are. Uh, I know that's something that he's run before. It's something that I've ripped off from him uh, pretty blatantly. Um, so let's let's see if he, uh, he's got the new arcs lined out. Okay, these teams were quite eager. As soon as I announced the 30 second time, uh, they both just readied up, so loving this already. Yeah, I believe they do want to give each other time to adjust their loadouts up until the uh, the loadout lock. But, uh, nah, there, there's, uh, these guys want blood. Oh, nice guys to love it. <laughs> <laughs> it's always nice to see when these teams are uh, eager to engage. Well, again, I, we say that, but all of the long-rangeness from both of these teams... Um, here, I'll go ahead and take a look at the red team right quick. Fancy Star. Uh, this is Dementio's uh, Mobula. Uh, it's a Mercury up top with Artemis Hades at the lower deck, Gatling, and their gun at the wings. Uh, and that's accompanied by Kali. Uh, piloted by Arius, uh, that's Hades in the middle, double art on the lower deck, and mine launchers at the flank, fallback guns for sparkler fish here to jump off and run. Uh, taking a look at the blue team. We have the Lunar Moth, piloted by Mirren, that's a um, Hades top deck, double Banshee lower deck, top deck, or middle deck, uh, flare and Gatling gun. Then we have the Flying Founder, piloted by Captain Scrubbeard. It's a mobile top packing Mercury on the top. On the low to lower decks, we have double Artemis rockets, and on the top, we have a Flamer and a Flare Cannon. Looks like Kylie's quickly moving up. Same for Fancy Star. Yeah, and as the. Heavy find on the Flying Founder. As the dust cloud parts, there's a lot of open area for these guys to shoot at each other from. The thing that concerns me, uh, and the, uh, this blue team has given us a really nice showing so far today, but they're starting this engagement fairly low, which gives uh, the Hades and the Arts on the other team uh, a lot of room to work with, where uh, these blue mobs are going to be struggling. Also the heavy overextension from the Luna Moth right now, he's being focused higher by two mobile at the same time. That I don't like those odds for him. Armor yeah. already drops. Little hydro dodge going on. Uh, interesting fancy star, uh, just like any Merc art mob, has to kind of stay level with, uh, with Luna Moth. So you got a brief window where Luna dodged a little bit of fire from uh, fancy star. Uh, but it's not going to save him for very long with all the Hades fire coming in from Kali. But uh, I kind of missed out on an armor break as Flying Founder uh, moves in, uh, focusing on Fancy Star. 
and like, doing a little bit of work. Not quickly enough, however, as uh, the Luna Moth falls to the focus fire from the red team. This doesn't look good for a flying found who's being focused fired. He does manage to retreat behind the clouds though, but I still have a spot so they know exactly where he is. Indeed. Although it does make it a bit harder for them. You see a lot more shots missing right now, but still, they lost the spot, so... Yep, I and Lunamoth uh... spawns in, so it all is not lost for the Flying Flounder. Uh, let's see how quickly they can regroup, though. With the cloud in the way and the spot lost, I think it's possible, but let's see how quickly the red team can push their advantage, uh, which it doesn't appear that they are, so... This is a, this is just going to be a 1-0 engagement, uh, segueing into whatever happens next. And quick focus fire on a flying founder. Mm -hmm. He did take a low position again, which I don't get with uh, these loadouts. But yeah, these, uh, this blue team is uh, packing mercs, which essentially means you have to. Uh, uh, one is packing mercs, the other one is packing Hades. But all ah, right, you are Luna Moth. Uh, is one of the the only boats uh, in this matchup that can shoot up with uh, the Banshees and the Hades. Uh, all the arts are just uh, not going to be able to shoot up. So I guess they, they could stay low, but um, the question is, is it beneficial giving your enemy the uh, Artemis Rocket the perfect chance to hit you? Exactly, and that uh, the Luna Moth's going to really depend upon being able to put out really consistent DPS. And as soon as you start getting a couple of disables going, that just gets uh, interrupted. Or if uh, you know somebody gets forced off of a gun to do some repairs, uh, that DPS just gets uh, shut down, and you start to see the Artemis uh, taking over the fight. Flying Flounder does get an armor break on the Fancy Star. Uh, not a whole lot happening as a result of that, but we do see red team both about down to half health. Um, while oh, the... I've got armor down again. Oh, they break the armor again. Yeah, Fancy, Fancy Star is taking a little bit of a beating here. Uh, not a lot's happening um, in terms of the red team focus fire trying to beat anybody down on the blue team. takes both red ships down to less than half health. But, uh, it's going to be interesting to see how they're going to react to this. Now yeah, looks like we got a focus fire switch from Fancy Star to Kali, and it is paying oh, off! Very quick kill as soon as that focus fire started to rain in. And we should see a pretty quick turnaround on the Fancy Star. He's already pretty low. Uh, looks like Arts are just out of range. Banshee's definitely going to be out of range. And I think... Um, yeah, Daniel's just going to be able to out-backpedal them. I'm kind of looking at it. Out of range, so. And I think the Hades actually isn't arcing up with the Merc. I'm seeing a lot of uh, the Merc shooting at the Luna Moth and then the Hades shooting at the Flying Flounder. So, uh, you know, I don't know for sure, but I, I, I think it actually isn't arcing up. Let me have a close look at that. No, it actually. Yeah, he's. Um, what he's doing is wiggling around a little bit, um, as far as I can see. This is quite interesting to see if yeah. this actually works or not. Also, I do believe uh, the gunner on this boat is using stamina when it does line up. Uh, that's, I think, one of the things that is making this kind of sort of work. Uh, leading to an armor break on the Flying Flounder. Uh, not a lot happens as the result of it, but I think this guy's, uh, the Flying Flounder is eating enough pressure now that uh, he's going to start losing control on this engagement. Ooh, he might go... Ooh, that looks... And that happens a little bit more quickly than I make it out to be. Uh, however, it's a 1-1 engagement as Luna Moth um, takes advantage of the uh, initially low health going into that engagement and takes out the, uh, the Fancy. Again, Luna Moth 
descending. Uh, as he's trying to turn to get Arcs on the Kali, I didn't really see a balloon break, so I'm not sure why that is. He's not going to get any cover doing that. He's probably going to try to retreat out of here. Since they're fighting in uh, the red spawn, so what you see right now is they're getting ambushed by the fancy star who's bearing down on them with a brutal amount of firepower. Yeah, so indeed. they're probably not going to survive. Definitely not. Bring the score to 3-2. Uh, to two. Very interesting match until so far. Yeah, the, uh, the push into red spawn uh, seemed to be a good idea at the time on the part of blue team. And it's uh, it's interesting how quickly that can turn around as soon as you, uh, you know, you get that 1-1 one, one engagement uh, and then there you are in the enemy spawn as the other guy is spawning. Um, let's see if uh, we do see yeah, a regroup this, happening, though. This engagement can go anywhere. It's kind of an interesting strategy. Just, just rush to try to get the kill quickly. Might You could say it might be a bit too eager, but... I don't know, it's, 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 I kind of like how they're playing with the Mobilas in these uh, matches. I was uh, kind of afraid for a very long dragging out match where uh, both teams were just uh, staying behind the clouds trying to deliver sniper shots, but no, these teams uh, are definitely going in. Yeah, and I think uh, a lot of that we can attribute to, uh, I believe it's uh, the Flying, no, not the Flying Founder, but the Luna Moth. Just having the Hades double Banshee set up, that's going to force him to uh, try and get in close where those Banshees are going to be effective. Ooh, hold break on the Flying Founder. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Flying Founder's taking point here, so it's logical that he's going to start eating the Focus Fire. I think if these guys can pull up a, a double file formation and push that way, it might make it a little bit more confusing for the red team as to who we should Focus Fire. Um, the most logical thing you could possibly do is just who's ever closest, whoever is closest, you just focus that, uh, and then you can have better accuracy. Uh, you're going to take control of that uh, target a lot more quickly. Yeah, now they see the uh, Luna is uh, in front, so they focus on him. Mm -hmm. Something I've been surprised about myself is that they constantly go through the middle. Like on the dunes on both sides, you have like a destroyed ship and the uh, wheel bones. They're not really using them, like you can use great cover from it, that both teams have been ignoring this, just completely going in on uh, who has the most muscle in the open field. Indeed, uh, and this could actually work a lot of times uh, to the disadvantage of the blue team, because as you can see they're sitting right in the middle of this dust cloud that's going to eat up their components. Uh, and you can still have, you know, some cover to work with and just avoid the dust cloud altogether if you can move into the ribs. Uh, or to the other side of the ribs, or try to use the uh, the uh, Leviathan over on the east side of the map. Uh, Leviathan's kind of tough to use when you're a Mobula because you have to rotate around it, and the forward-facing arcs of the Mobula don't really work too well with that. So if if you're like a Junker Galleon team or something like that, then you know the Leviathan is a really good place to try and use. Uh, the ribs give you a lot of like up and down whack-a-mole type of cover so that's the advantage uh, the advantageous thing to do as a mobula um, but like you like you say we're not really seeing that uh, we're mostly seeing the use of the cloud cover red team trying to take the strong point and um, blue team it's trying to... Muscle, to muscle right now yeah yeah Focusing heavy fire on the Kylie right now. Although they're completely ignoring the founding star again. I'm not sure if that's the wise decision right now, but I guess we're gonna find out. Yeah, I think with the with the Merc Hades setup, it takes a little bit of extra time and a little bit extra um, work on the part of whoever's shooting the Hades to really take control of the engagement. We just see saw most of a clip going wide. Uh, going after the Luna Moth, you know, almost hitting, but not quite. So, it's you know, it takes time for that boat to really take control. When he does, it's brutal. Yeah, the thing is, like, um, since the mod has a ship that can turn, um, it's really um, um, sensitive in turning, especially when those and uh, when the Blue Mobile has maneuver position forth and backwards, they have to re-line up the arcs. And I guess that's, that's kind of a uh, bit of a, a downside of this uh, ship they're using constant movement is gonna pull them over. I guess if they 
We're facing static targets. This ship would absolutely devastate him. But right now, with its constant movement, uh, it's going to make it harder for them. Yeah, and he also he has to approach at an angle, which is uh, I think one of the reasons why you're seeing him hang back more often. Uh, looking at the field right now, it doesn't appear to be the case because Kali's way out in left field. But uh, yeah, for the most part, you kind of see Kali moving in forward and Fancy hanging back. And it's kind of, I think a lot of that is because he has to approach at an angle because of those gun arcs. Where everybody else in this match can just move in face first, you know, dead on. Yeah, it looks like as soon as you have the Red Mob that focused, he moves back, wait for his ally to uh, refocus fire. Yeah, this uh, this turn on the part of Luna Moth, uh, you know, as Kali starts to come in, and, you know, they've set up a, a nice pincer here. Um, Luna turns for, you know, 1v1s, and I, I kind of don't think that was a good idea. I, I think uh, Blue Team could have really pushed on Fancy Star and got, it a, lot, got a lot of work done. Um and then turned around for, for Kali. Oh, and that goes down the... Yeah. Yeah, that, that, that turnaround, they should have fully pushed on Star on... The only, really di the only on disadvantage that would have happened if they had just fully pushed on Fancy Star is they would have been in red spawn again. Um, Whatever would have happened anyway, uh, whatever they would have done. I guess only uh, doing a tactical withdraw, first, um, destroying the pincer of the uh, red team, that would have been the only maneuver that actually got them out of there, but it looks like oh, it goes down already. Yeah, it was a very interesting match, especially for, you know, a sniper match. Um, so yeah, I, I, had, I, I kind of enjoyed watching that one. Uh, it's very interesting. And I, I kind of want to say that was uh, a little bit more action-packed than the, the control <laughs> boats that we were looking at earlier. Uh, I think that was... Uh, oh, who uh, the the Zealots and the East Chaladon Trading Company. Uh, those low firepower solutions, just kind of a lot of wiggling about and not anything happening. This was... Uh, you got to see a lot more firepower going out this match, so that was that was a lot of fun. Yeah, that's definitely the most interesting match I've uh, been watching today. Especially, I've been seeing uh, quite a lot of the uh, East Chaladonian Trading Company lately, and I've seen those guys, like, when they first started off, and they, I have to say, they, they really improved. They keep coming back uh, most weeks, uh, even facing the riders. Uh, I, like, I know that myself, if you face these guys week after week, it can be kind of demoralizing, but they, they keep coming back, and, like, uh, uh, deep respect for these guys. Like, they're really improving. Indeed, uh, and we kind of saw the same thing happen with uh, with the Skyboard when they first uh, showed up on the scene. Uh, they were kind of the new guys, and they were, you know, maybe didn't do, do so well at first, but the, the turnaround where they started to get really good happened really quickly. And they, it's like they went from zero to, we can beat the Riders uh, in a matter of like a month or so. So, And we're kind of seeing that with the East Chaladon uh, Trading Company. Um you know where they they've kind of come at come in on the scene and and they're making a lot of improvements. Uh, I I kind of think they're watching these streams and picking apart what's going wrong, what's going right, and uh, making improvements. Uh, and they're doing a really good job of it. Yeah, that's for sure. That's in... but okay. That that was the last match for us, unfortunately. Indeed. So we have to. Sign out, uh, and I believe who is our, our co caster? Is that uh, uh that Lasana guy? Um, indeed, so go check out his stream if you want more uh, Guns of Icarus action. Uh, Lasagna is a fantastic guy, great streamer, uh, very entertaining. And we do have more matches not on this stream but remaining in the SCS today. So, uh, thanks for watching. This has been SCS number 107. Uh, hosted by myself, I am Mitch's Mustache, and I am joined by Sir Stefan. Good evening, everyone. So thank you very Have much, and signing out.